Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. <laughs> Good morning, Glenn. What's up, man? Come on. We, so, we, we need that hot mic. You have to tell that um, overachieving alcoholic joke. Okay, all right. Okay, so here you go. So uh, alcoholic walks into a bar. Yeah. And he says, hey, what's the special today? Bart- Got it. Bartender says, it's all you can drink for a buck. The alcoholic said, I'll take two of those. Absolutely, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, come on now. That's how we roll. <laughs> come on <laughs> now. Ching. <laughs> So on no, the road, here, Mikey. <laughs> here's the real funny thing. So we just uh, we finished up a coffee um, with another guest. Um, well, technically the same guest. So we finished up this coffee, right? Roll and, one uh, into another, right? And then and then uh, and, and like we talked about everything we needed to talk about, right? And we, and we did really well in that twenty some minutes. And then uh, and then we went to we went to dead air. And then Brian goes, "You ready?" And Brian, Audio Hive, by the way, AudioHive.com for all your Audio Hive podcasting needs. Um, Brian goes, Brian goes, are you ready? And I go, sure. It, like, we have no idea what's what's about to happen here. We, we, we have absolutely no idea what's going to transpire. Glenn, do you have an idea? We, we usually don't. I mean, some, sometimes we have some topics. Sometimes right. we have, you know, agendas and notes and... You know, Google and ChatGPT responses. No, we don't. We're, we're kind of an, I'm anti, I'm anti yeah. ChatGPT. I'm, I'm Why? Just, because slanted well no i just um don't forget somebody's got to program that crap oh and those people are making a lot of money yeah i just got to put an ai after my name mike rhodes ai oh, there we go again so <laughs> i know i love it we don't know that so i was just at a conference first of all i've learned in life for me when i deal with things in life and people and they use words i ask them to define them mm-hmm. because you know, there's some words I'm still learning what they mean. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know angst people like, oh, I, I've, you know, love my daughter. She's a rock star, but she's like, oh, I have major anxiety. I'm like, define that for me, right? I say, because I know anxiety is, oh, I got a little stress. My heart increased two beats per minute, right? Mm-hmm. Or I can't get out of my bed. I have physically crippling anxiety. And where, there are people where, in where, both camps. Right, where I should be in the hospital, right. 911 right now, right? right? So, I mean, every, anywhere across. So I asked folks to define, right? And so I was at this major financial fintech conference. And, you know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, five years ago, like the key, a key buzzword was fintech, right? right? And if you put fintech in front of anything, it's right. sold, right? Now it's AI, AI. So yep. I, was, I was just at this conference, and, and there were a thousand meeting tables, and I had, in, in two days, I had twenty two meetings, three dinners, and a pool party. Wow. Right in in two days. Right. So everybody used AI. All the booths had AI. Everybody had AI. And so I asked everybody what AI was. Eighty percent of them could not answer. They didn't know artificial intelligence. Well, no, yeah, they, they okay. knew that. But they didn't but know. Okay. They didn't. They they said, well, we use AI. How do you use How do you AI? Use AI? Right. Well, we we, I'm right. like, are you kidding me? What's a Bitcoin? Like, What's a Bitcoin? Like, get out, get out. Right. No. No, Bitcoin. That's... Bitcoin. By the way, what in the world? Oh, and what in the world? Whatever. That's a whole separate show. I can't get my arms around Mikey, let alone the my bill. arms around what's going on in the world today. The so let's focus currency. on let's focus on sobriety today. How does that sound, Claudia? Welcome back. Hi guys. Thanks yeah, for having me. So glad to have you back. Um, so so I, I'm going to go ahead and cue something up. My check engine light went on in my car today. Oh, you okay. just ride around me. I ride around for six months. No, yeah, so this, I, oh, well, now this it is really? interesting. Yes, did it, it really? really did. Okay, it all went right. on on the way. It went on on the way a here. Honest program. That's I've all. Got, and and here's the thing. I, I right away my heart skipped a jump. Right because okay something is wrong with the car. I don't know what yet, mm-hmm. but something is wrong with the car. And I just want to talk today about check engine lights that we have because my check engine light goes on in my body. I'll either physically get exhausted, that's the check engine light, I'll get that anxiety that you talked about, my heart will start beating faster, and and I've got to do something about that check engine light. I can't ignore it for six months. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm at the stage now, the program has taught me, you pay pay attention to those check, I think you call them red flags, Glenn, um, you know, yeah. that, that come out, and, and I just know I'm going back the wrong way, <clears throat> because it's my belief that 
when I start feeling, thinking, and acting the way I did when I was drinking, I think I'm moving back mm-hmm. towards the possibility of drinking. Mm-hmm. So, so that's a, that's right, a check so engine light they, for me. In, with drinking, we talk about relapse, mm-hmm. right? And, and and what I've learned through my studies and, and is there's three stages of relapse. There's emotional relapse, yes. right, which I think is the check engine light, yeah, okay. where things things aren't going right. You know, things are off. You know, I'm I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling you know, anxiety, whatever that means, you know, I'm, I'm off, right? Red flag. I'm off. Right. And then the, the mental is, Oh, I remember when I used to be off and I used to take a drink. Yeah. And I sure, remember, I remember that burn. I remember how, Oh man, within, within 20 minutes, all that was gone. Yes, right? To get right? out of your head. And, and that's the mental. And that's right, thinking, sure. Oh, how great would that be right now? Now you're starting to grow it. Right. And, and so, and then the, the third, phase is it's a really bad phase which is physically you actually go to the liquor store buy the and, and actually drink the booze right. right so i am very aware of those three buckets today mm-hmm. um in in quite a period of time i haven't done the third bucket but i probably spend let's and, and i'm just shooting numbers here but i probably spend um 25 percent of my life okay right mm-hmm. i probably spend um, sixty percent in the emotional okay. red red flag check engine light bucket, okay. and then I do still to this day. Oh sure, I still in the mental relapse. I remember. I you know now what I will say, and, and it's not that that not that much, but I still today, I'm like. Oh man, I remember when I used to have that series of long conference calls and I'd get a big red solo. Oh man, how cool would that be on this you know Tuesday after cloudy right, Tuesday right. afternoon, right? Right. I mean, I, I I'd still go there. Yeah, I I do too. So I think the brain's wired. I just wired. in a meeting not maybe a month or two ago, and I, and again I stress that I have no you know it wasn't like the obsession of anything emotional mm-hmm. leading me to that path, but I think it was just a memory of I was a big red wine drinker mm-hmm, right. and the Pinot Noir, and honestly. I remember thinking, and I shared this in a meeting, I literally like could take myself back to that first sip. And, sure. I, and I sat and had that thought for sure. probably a good two minutes. It's not a bad, it's not That's a That's insanity mentally, though, right? Yeah, but but if is. you're ever wondering, am I still an alcoholic? Right. So um, they, they call that a brain marker, right? So yeah. when, and, and the reason why that is so in, still ingrained is because back then it worked, mm-hmm. right? Um, well, you knew it was well, only what, minutes before that relief. Like I was, right. it, I was visualizing. Yes. I could sense that first sip, that going down, and like it's in that, such detail. And it's that moment mm-hmm. that I tried to recapture by mm-hmm. drinking a fifth. Right? Mm-hmm. It was really, really the first drink did it for me. It got me where I yeah, wanted to get. Right. But we didn't know when to but stop. But then, but right. then you tried to recapture. I tried to recapture that. Well, I would say I that every time recapture. I was going to drink. Yeah. Right. Why? Why can't I? You know, you Just feel that bad. little buzz. Right. Right. Like, but right. that's how normal people drink. Right. So that's your red. That's that's mm. your red flags when you. That's when your check engine light goes on. You know what I just thought of? What this is my new invention. AI is big, but this is the mic invention. Take the little check engine light and make it glow brighter. As the there you, you go. know what I mean. Mine would so, be buzzing red. Right, right. there you go. <laughs> oh, right? Yeah, pull yeah, the but, car yeah, over. Would, <laughs> so okay, so let's talk about your check engine light. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you going to do about it? Oh, I'm going to get it checked out right away. I mean, by who? First time on the way home, I'm going to stop at one of those auto places mm-hmm. and they let you. Oh, plug you are little, good. I like to marinate the, the outcome a little bit. Well, I don't want to end up stranded <laughs> on a road somewhere, right? I don't want the car to die on me, so. I'll stop and I'll get it checked out and get the code and then I'll call my mechanic today and say, you know, here's what the code said. Yeah, that's great. It's pretty good. I got to do what, something. What would you do? I would probably drive it another two months and then I tell my it. husband. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. he would say, oh, when did that come on? I oh, love, yesterday. I love, I love honesty. <laughs> you're, you're great. Well, No, I'm, I'm probably, <clears throat> well, I mean, what that reminds me of is, you know, back in 2003 and four, the IRS letters. Yeah. You know, you, you that's get the, a check engine light right there. Yeah, you get the IRS <laughs> letter, and you, you don't even open it up. You just you, you throw you it on the counter. Oh, I just threw it in the drawer. And, Shred and, it. And I kept Shred throwing it. it. I kept throwing them in the drawer. Ignorance is bliss. For years. Yeah. And and then you hear doom doom doom. Yeah, folks. That, first of all, that's not the right move. And it's not the right move to drive with a check engine light forever. Right. But I'm more. You know, I wouldn't. 
just because of experience, I know that it's not a critical, I will get to it more when it's convenient instead of stop my whole day and stop my whole life. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I'm better about that. I'm excited. No, if my car was on the side of the road, then I would handle that more of a priority <laughs> issue, right? <clears throat> but I've also noticed if you don't address the check engine light sooner than later, right. it's... It can do more damage to yes, the car. Yes, it's harder to fix, more expensive, right. more rehab, more whatever right. down the road. But I think that applies to everything, right? Like as we were talking about Absolutely. our health, right? Yes. You know, what I put off. You're not going to... Here's the thing that I really have to... Rat. I'm not going to change the outcome right. by not addressing it. Right. And somewhere it in will my get worse brain... Most right, of the time. Right. right. Right, where I think that's always been my mechanism is to just ignore it. That's and a good it'll reminder go for me. What's that? Get on the check engine check light engine sooner light. than later. I know my liver light was well, probably well, first of all, blaring. <laughs> first of all, what what I've probably learned of all the check engine lights I've had come on in my life, maybe one time, it went out by itself. Oh no, mine does that all the time, and so yeah. I've got that playing in the back of my head. Oh, oh it's yeah. just a temporary problem. Mm-hmm. Like I'm hoping when I go out there to start it after coffee, it'll be fine. It'll right. be gone. Well, and then with all these electronic things, That's right. you, know, you don't know. know. You don't right. know. It could be the gas tap caps. Not yeah, all the time. Right. Not. I mean, exactly. who, who knows what it is? But I mean, that's what you know. But it's crazy. But when when you go through life and you talk about emotional relapses, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Which is funny you say that because I have a friend in the program, and I remember. That she said that she literally didn't know what happened. She was in Walgreens, and before she knew it, she bought the little bottle of wine, had it in the car, and was drinking it. Uh, There's some pre yes. things that happen, and it fascinates yeah, so, me. So I've said that exact same thing, mm-hmm. and most of the time I said it, it was bullshit. Mm-hmm. That, that was kind of my my way of making an excuse, excusing my my way through my oops, mm-hmm. right? Um, but but I have, I I I, I can I. A couple times I could resonate with the fact that I was on autopilot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, where, but, but now I have such intense awareness of where I'm at in life every day, every hour, what bucket I'm in. Yeah. I know what I'm in emotional, mm-hmm. right? Well, here, here's what I really believe. I don't think you go to physical relapse without going through emotional and mental. Because they're connected. I yeah, I, 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 I just think you have to go through those doors. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you have to go through those doors. If you know you've been in any, if you've had any AA knowledge or, you know, I think we. AA hey, hey, ruins drinking. It really <laughs> does. It, it does. Dang, I love when re- people really say, I just came in, in here to figure out how to drink right? like a lady. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Hey, I did too. We're all eating uh, muffins in here. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, you know, and that's it. I, I think I don't find many people who drink alcoholically that don't have that emotional component, yeah. you know, that we just, and, and I actually see that in people close to me. Um, you can see it spiral out of control. And, and it's funny because when I was talking to my mom about AA, they still, and again, because they're not in a program, mm-hmm. and you can't expect them because even the way I drank, being an alcoholic prior to coming in the program, I really thought it was just about the drinking. Sure. And I reflect on that so much when I hear there is no way I would have ever been able to quit drinking on my own because I it has nothing to do it, with exact. the drinking. You know, it's so funny. I said this before I, I sat with my sister on my back deck, and I was in one, but I remember it as clear as, you know, so I was I was definitely obliviated, mm-hmm. but I remember it as clear as day. And I said, it's not my drinking. You, got to, you don't understand. Mm-hmm. It's not my drinking. I got stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And to Glenn's point, either this week or last week, when he said, you know, or I guess all of us talking, you know, it took me decades to get to that point. I'm not, I couldn't cure that in four months, right? Mm-hmm. I, I haven't been able to cure, cure it in four plus years. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it takes time to process and get, get your life in order where mm-hmm. you're addressing the things that aren't the drinking, exactly. if that makes sense. Exactly. And that's why I kind of feel bad when I see a newcomer come in because, you know, for me, and I've said this to people that have asked me to sponsor them, you know, the drinking, that's to me the easy part. Yeah, right. Put the plug in the jug. And I don't right. like, I like, Definites, yeah, right. you know, right, I hate right. riding in the gray area and step one, you know, that's it. But that in reflecting over four years, like what a journey if I reflect on it, like that was just the very tip. Mm-hmm. And and to, to know the, the hurdles, the struggles, 
uh, feeling those emotions. And I think for the most part, I think that's part of it. I, I couldn't go. And I think on a whole, alcoholics, we can't go through those emotions. I couldn't anyway. You know, when you're feeling bad or things happen, yeah, that's a normal response. But somewhere, and I think part of mine is childhood, you know, we were not, my mom wanted to over, it always over goes mother. back to childhood. It does. And yes. we always can blame our parents. Right, I mean, right, right. <laughs> but, my kids. Yeah, right. And I'm sure my kids have the same, you know. But, but being in the program, I'm able to have a different, I, I'm able to be a better parent for mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. in ways that I always wanted to be. I knew I wanted something different for them, but again... You know, this program teaches me and I'm able to share that knowledge with my kids. And, uh, you know, and that's it. I think you can recognize when you're in the program for some time. You may not. I've encountered people that I don't even know what their drinking habits are. But I see the red flags and, you know, I see myself in them. Yeah, sure. And um, that's it. I, I just think it really is just the emotional component and no matter what happens. And I've had people say to me, oh, well, I relapsed, I'm going through, I'm going through this, or my dog died, or, Mm -hmm. you know, but I really, and and, you know, and I don't ever say that I won't drink because there are certain things that I've witnessed in the program recently. Someone just lost their daughter. Uh, I I can't say sitting here today with you that they're- I've mentally gone there. I've gone there where- And then you know what I do? I tell my brain, but I'm not there right now. Right. Deal with it when you're right there right now. Right. And I try and right. back myself into the moment. Right. But you know? but, but, but watching them work mentally. a program. Oh, my yeah. God. But because... I'll tell you, what, what I can say, I have I have certainly not lost kids, but I have had... Yeah, me too. Right. Amazing, amazing. storms mm-hmm. happen in the last number of years. And, you know, I actually just pulled this out. There is nothing that I cannot get through mm-hmm. sober. Mm-hmm. And and I 100% believe that um, because I believe in the tools mm-hmm. that I have. I do 25 mm-hmm. things to stay sober, and those, I don't know, I still do all 25 things. It's gone up. No. When you were on Zoom, it was yeah. 22. Uh, I know. I'd love to know what those additional well, three I, are. I, I keep working at Well, podcast is one of them. Mm-hmm. So that was 23. Um, but, you know, I sit there and, and, and say, you know what, I um, I am so confident in those things. I'm not sure which ones work, but I know all of them work and I can get through anything. And and probably one of the key ones is I have the ability today I can sit in my own crap. Mm-hmm. Literally, I could sit in my own crap for hours today <clears throat> and just suffer better. You know, where I'm like, "Hey, I'm in crap." It's like the first wheel. I'm in the bottom of the first wheel. I'm seeing all the shit down there. It smells bad. People are staring at me. I don't like how they look. I mean, I mean, I've had some really tough situations, and I have confidence that I can get through it, mm-hmm. and 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 that helps. Yeah, it you does. Know, having that confidence. Yeah. So, but that took time. Well, and here's the thing. I I think the epiphany I'm having right now is we've got near 20 years of sobriety sitting in this coffee shop right now, right? Which isn't a lot. I mean. You know, we we could have got every day is a lot. Every day right? is a lot. Every day is a lot. But here's my here's my point. At at my five year marker, I don't have it all figured out. I mean, oh, I, right. I still have fear. I still have anxiety. Yep. My check engine light still comes on. I still fantasize about that drink. I blah mm-hmm. blah blah. And and the newcomer, I think, needs to know that it it doesn't get better, but it gets better. It, yeah. It, yeah. It it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't cure. But we can deal with things in a in because a, we have a clear we have a clear mind because of know? those tools right 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 yeah absolutely you know but the confidence you know that's it I think here's the other spin because I do know someone where if you haven't surrendered a that you're an alcoholic and that you don't have the power um, they they look for those things mm-hmm. to drink over. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, mm-hmm. well, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And That's yeah, more they're, powerful than my, you're right. Because well, yeah. they haven't worked step one. They, exactly. they don't want to give it up. Right. right. That's it. And you're making excuses, that. you know, right. or shifting. Well, this is the support group I need to be in. My problem is really not drinking. Right. You know, and, and I've listened to that. And what a what a textbook to see. That's a create your own program. It. Yeah, right. exactly. Mm-hmm. To, to fit you and what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one, again, that is right in front of me, just a lesson and that. You know, I'm hearing it. And to me, that is my higher power speaking. Because to see that, I know that's not how I want to work the program. Right. Um, because 
at the end of the day, I don't think it's really working, you know, right. um, if we talk ourselves into that. And number one, that's why I liked it, you right. know. Number one is definitely and 12. You know, the stuff in between, the high, you know, step three, I, I, I think we're human. We right. constantly, you know, we want to have faith. And I think in those real moments, and that's what I say, you know, the rooms are part of my sobriety, you know, meetings, fellowship, the steps, the readings, but, and my sponsor, and, I, and in fact, here's the ironic part. My sponsor is semi-retired and traveled constantly throughout my sobriety. And she's been away. She'll be away like the entire month. And I've gone through some real tough things. And she's on a cruise ship in Australia. Like, I can't reach they her. They don't get cell phones? They don't get satellite right? phones? Well, she's tried to call me once, and okay. it was at a bad right. time, and I couldn't answer. I mean, come on. You're the sponsor. Be right? available. Right? Do you know how my ego worked early sobriety? My, my sponsor went to travel, and, and I was like... How dare you travel? Yeah. Like, I need you. Like, yeah. like I mean. <sighs> my sponsor moved to Florida. He didn't check with me first. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, he so checked with crazy. his wife. How lame is that? <laughs> check with so you, me. I'm right? important. How we change, you know? Yeah. Well, I said that to my sponsor. She's like, oh, we were thinking about they have friends in St. Croix. And I said, oh, God, you're not leaving, are you? But you know what? And I think that, too, you know? I, and that occurred to me just the other day. I'm going through some tough stuff, but yet I'm able to. And again, that comes back to building your army. You know, I don't put all my, you know, eggs in that basket, but it's also relying on me. And that's when I think it's a balance because that was the topic that came up this week, too. You know, I see P and it was the pink cloud, you know, and I know I was mm -hmm. part of that pink cloud. I jumped in. It was COVID. Um, and I did use the people in, in Zoom, you know, to help me. Uh, and, th and I think that's great. You need that. But there comes a point in your sobriety. Mine came when COVID was lifted, and then I had to go out into the real world. And that was, you know, eye-opening to me because now I didn't have that safety net of being in my basement on Zoom and not really living life because the life right. had shut down. Sure. And that's when you really started. And, and not until probably year two and three um, did I start to really see working that program, you know. And that's it, is that we can't become just like everything else that alcoholics do. We take it to another level. Um, there's a balance in finding, you know, your people, going to meetings, but also trying to navigate life, you know, on your own as well and using those tools in the program to help you to do so. Because, you know, again, we can attach ourselves to people, places, and things easily. Right. Um, but for me, the growth is trying to, to do better, you know, on my own as well. And having the knowledge of people that when I just get stuck, hey, I need help with this. I'm, you know, I'm at my bottom, which I've been in the last couple of weeks, right, you know. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I've learned to make some really, I mean, I've, I've learned, I'm, I'm back to having confidence in my own decisions. But my, my decision making process and filters go through what I've learned through AA. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's still times I reach out to my sponsor you know, not as much. And, and the reason why I don't as much is because I know the answer. Yeah. You, you know? know exactly oh, what Oh, I say this to my yeah. sponsor. Yeah. Right. She's and like, I know hey, what do you think? I know what it is. voice inflection he's going to use. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. And so I'm like, I don't make the call. And I'll say, I just want to marinate in this shit a little bit. So yeah, right. amuse me. Yeah, yeah but I went, right. through, I, I went through something recently and I actually, you know, I mean, I, I use my tools and I reached out to a guy I have a lot of confidence in. I, I said, hey, here's what's kind of going on. What's been kind of going on in my head. And the words came out of my mouth into the air, and I started laughing. I said, you know what? I don't even need to finish this sentence, this story. I mm -hmm. said, I, I know the answer. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's the same. But I the always... stuff that your brain can process and kind of, you know, go through and, and sit there and say, man. Situations that yep. used to baffle so, us. So question for you, and I've been asked this from people outside the program. So you still go to meetings? I think what we just did the last two coffees the last two weeks is we talk about yes i do because this is my this is my foundation this is my that where i get my tools this is where i get my support uh it's hard to it's hard for somebody outside the program to understand that absolutely but i know yeah it's like you still go to meetings aren't you cured you know i said it to a woman in early sobriety in a women's meeting she was yeah. in the program like 38 years and i said i gotta You're still ask coming you to meetings? what haven't you figured out talk about mm -hmm. a slow learner yeah right uh, and she said why because i'm an alcoholic you mm -hmm. know and that and that makes me laugh when yeah. i think of that memory because you know i get it now right. and and that's it we're never going to be cured and and even my family my mom well honey we see you haven't drank for four years so again 
it's not about the alcohol. It's not, you no. know, yeah, people so don't get it. People yeah. don't get it, and I can't expect them to get it. Nope. You right. know, right. and if right. I were to start, it'd be the same. Yeah. And uh, that's why, but that's what keeps me sober is the clarity. And and sometimes it is that painful clarity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so clear that woo, we have to get through it. Yeah, right. And as an alcoholic, you know, I never wanted to go through the pain. Right. Um, right. So that's what keeps me sober, having the clarity. And because it's a drink is not going to help any of the situation. It may momentarily, you know, rest that brain for a minute. And right. for me, that's what it was. The pain worry. and change are the fuel for growth. Mm-hmm. Say again. Pain and change are the fuel for growth. Love that. Gold is refined in the furnace of affliction. I heard okay. that before. I've, I've got one. I'm then. 24 I've, karat gold. I've seen that on the, <laughs> I've got I've got one. I've got one. Pay attention to the check engine light. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Love you guys. Thanks, right. Mike. See you guys. Bye Thanks, guys. Thanks, Claudia. Bye. Thanks for joining us for today's Coffee Chat. To contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week, and remember, there is a solution.